the crafty home and sorry it's been so long <sighs> oh my goodness let's see the last time I uploaded a video was during rib sat which was like what the middle of January oh my goodness I've been so busy I got sick and I could barely talk for a while and then um, my husband put in his two weeks notice at his job so that was busy and stressful and uh, I ended up watching a baby for some people last week. Well, for a cousin, actually. She's like a second cousin through my husband. Something like that. She was adorable, but I couldn't, like, film videos in the afternoon when I would normally film them. And it's just been crazy getting adjusted to my husband being home all the time. And, um, yeah, it's just quite the adjustment going on around here. So um, I'm finally getting around to doing some. I'm going to try to film a whole bunch today so that... I can kind of schedule them out and have some for the week. So I will get the hang of getting into a schedule um, sometime, maybe. Okay, so um, I'm going to do my January wrap up. I have notes because uh, some of these were ebooks or books I borrowed from the library. Um, I got 12 books read in January. There was the um, Rib Sat, and then there was also a Bout of Books. And Bout of Books I did really well on. So kind of made it so I read more than probably I normally would have. Uh, so the first one I read is The Survivor by Diane Mills and I have done a review on my blog. I will link it down below or even maybe when I put the picture of the book up I will try to remember to annotate that so you can just click there. Um, but that was a very good suspenseful Christian fiction book. I enjoyed it very very much. It's about an author who um, like it's a sequel but you didn't have to read the first one and I kind of have caught up enough with the first one that I want to go back and read it um but she's an author and she was writing a suspenseful book but it was based on a cold case this is the first book it was based on a cold case and I don't know what the first book was called but um and she ends up almost getting killed well the second book she is writing another book um but this it's like an ancient cold case, so they don't think it's going to be any big deal. And it's about a woman who survived. Like, she approached the author to write her story, but she wanted it fictionalized. And uh, it's about a woman who was, as a young, young child, um, was attempted to be murdered. Um, and her throat was slit, but she somehow survived. And all about that so it was really interesting very suspense suspenseful I loved it um, the second book I read in January was blankets by Craig Thompson and that is a um, graphic novel about his life and it was okay uh, some of the artwork in a couple places I was like Ugh. yeah too much not for young eyes my eyes are young okay maybe not but and it just didn't end the way I wanted it to but anyway it wasn't too bad it could have been a lot worse so if that makes sense because it's kind of about his struggle uh, he grew up as in a Christian family and then near the end you know he he rejects all of that and turns to atheism and he really could have I think athe atheism if I had to guess he really could have bashed stuff but he didn't so I think it was well done um third was uh Coraline but I didn't read the Neil Gaiman version I read the graphic novel um it was good uh, I now at least know the storyline so that's good I may eventually read the real book but I wanted to get a couple of graphic novels in for Bad of Books so I could say I read more and then I picked up I had a whole, like if you go back and watch my January TBR, I had plenty of books I could have chose from. I think I still have four of them on the floor in there that I'm going to try to read this month. That's not going to happen. Let's just be honest. Anyway, <laughs> I'll perpetually be behind. I'll never be caught up. Um, but when I do like a readathon, I frequently just pick up whatever is interesting me. And so I read um, Uglies by Scott Westerfield. Um, I enjoyed it. It's about, um, like, everybody's considered ugly, and then you get to an age, and you have an operation. I think it's, is it 16 or 18? I think it's 16. And then you're a pretty, and, um, yeah, it's, it's a dystopian world. It's pretty interesting. 
Um, I've read the second book too, which uh, later on, and I haven't read the third one yet because I'm like, eh, I don't know. Seems like just more of the same. Anyway, they're okay. Um, then my copy of, oh look, I actually have this one so I can show it. All those other ones uh, were from the library or the first one was on my Kindle. Um, here I have uh, The Leet by Kara, Kara Cass. I had read um, the selection at the end of January and I, or uh, sorry, at the end of December, and um, the copy of The Elite that the library had was loaned out to somebody else. So thankfully my copy that I had ordered for Christmas came in the mail. So I quickly picked that up and read it and loved it. I love this series to pieces, one of my favorite series. Um, and then I read The Selection Stories, also by Kira Cass. Um, if you don't know about The Selection, the whole um, Selection series, it's uh, basically like set in a dystopian world, but it's almost like The Bachelor meets dystopian world. It's kind of interesting. There's a prince and um, people are chosen from the different like areas and um, then he has to pick his his bride from that and so anyway but there's a lot of other stuff that goes on too it's it's really good I love them so anyway so I read that and then I read the one by Kira Cass so this was supposed to be the last in the trilogy and it does sum up the story um but they were so wildly popular that there is a next one called The Air and um it's almost like a different series because it's many many years in the future but it looks really good and I can't wait for it to come out. But so then I read that and then I read uh, Pretties by Scott Westerfield, the second book in the Ugliest Trilogy. That one was a bit hard to read because like the pretties have this own little language and it gets really annoying after a while and it just seemed to drag after a while like it was this the same, I don't know, if you've read them you probably understand what I'm saying. I like the story a lot but uh, it could have been tightened up a bit, if that makes sense. So anyway, and then I read uh, Playing Saint by Zachary Bartels. My dad is borrowing right, it right now. I really enjoyed it. He said for him, it took him a few, uh, about 30 pages till he like really got into the story. Um, but it's about this um, mega church pastor who ends up having to help in this criminal investigation and um, so, and then come to find out all these other things are related to it and there's like Jesuit priests that come in and anyway, it's just, it's really interesting, really intricate pop, plot line, very suspenseful and I still can't believe it was who it was. Like, you just don't think it's going to be who it was. It was really, really good. Um, and then I read a Small Talk by Amy Julia Becker. This is Learning From My Children About What Matters Most. It's a nonfiction book, uh, Christian nonfiction, and it's about family life and things that she's learned from her children and just little like funny stories about life with little children and then um, what she's learned from it. So this book is really, really good and I did do a review on my blog, so I'll make sure to link that down below. And then I have read, let me see if I can grab it. Apparently I have these all in backwards order. Uh, the Patmos Deception by Davis Bunn. Now he is supposedly an award-winning novelist. He's written, not supposedly, I mean he really is, um, sold seven million copies, lots of bestsellers. Um, and this is a like suspense, Christian romantic suspense book. Um, I could see why his other books probably are really, really good. This one was great and I loved like all this stuff about Greece and history and archaeology and stuff. It was really interesting. And then you got to the end when he's wrapping up the whole thing, okay. And um, here's the ending which really won't give anything away because you don't know who they're getting but everything's getting exciting and they're setting everything up to like capture the bad guys, right? And this is how it ends. 
Manos revealed the pistol he'd been holding below the window seal. You're all under arrest. The end. Like, what? It was just like the most disappointing ending ever. And then there is an epilogue and the girl, like the main girl character, two different guys like her, they both propose in this ending epilogue and they never say like who she picks or anything. So I'm guessing it's the first in a series, but it doesn't say that anywhere and it doesn't, it doesn't read, it doesn't read like there's going to be a second book, but yet it just ends like that. So then therefore you think there's going to be a second book. I don't know if that makes sense. It's almost like he ran out of pages. He had contracted like so much room in his book and he had to cut stuff or something. I don't know. It was really bizarre. But I mean, I liked it up until the end. It was weird. I still have to write my review on my blog for that one. So anyway, and then, um, there were so many other books, but I finally went and picked something off my January TBR. Those two were on my January TBR, and the first one I read in the month was. Um, or the uh, anyway, it's neither here nor there. Uh, this is uh, Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear. I um, hope I'm saying her name right. I was reading this for the Once Upon a Read Along, and I missed the live show, unfortunately. I'm so sorry, girls. I really wanted to be there. Um, but I did um, read it and I'm going to watch the live show now after the fact but oh my goodness let's see I've already read I finished this the last day uh, January 31st like late in the night and I don't know what that little noise was and I've already read Sapphire Blue the second in the trilogy and I started Emerald Green and would love to finish it and I will finish it this month but um Here's another book I have to do a review. I'm doing a tour for that I have to get it done like right away. So I have to take a break and read that and then come back to this. I love this world. I love the whole time travel thing, the mysterious society, trying to figure out what's going on. And I love the lens that we get to watch it all through Gwenny or Gwen or Gwyneth, uh, however you want to say her name or call her. I think she's Gwenny. I think that's cute to call her that. But anyway, she, is just your typical modern girl and it's it makes it all so interesting to be reading it and looking at it through her eyes um all this weird mysterious stuff you know and anyway it's just i love it i love 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 it so you should really pick these up if you haven't read them yet they're very good so there you go that was the 12 books i read in january and i am ahead on my goodreads goal so far for the year which is very exciting um so yeah i'm going to do my february tbr in a minute even though it's quite a ways into february but um yeah so i hope you enjoyed let me know uh what your favorite book was that you read in january down in the comments below i would love to hear and if you've read any of the ones i talked about and have any comments i'd love to hear that too and um until next time, I'll chat with y'all later. Bye!